Hi everyone. Um, I don't know why I do that weird <laughs> wave. It's so goofy, but <laughs> hello, hello. Um, I am recording from the car today um, at my boys track practice. And so um, I thought it was a good time to sit down and talk about the day that I had the, um, the biopsy done. Um, and so last video talked about the day that I went in and had the ultrasound and the ultrasound was done on March 8th. Um, like I said, in that video, the biopsy, they were able to schedule that initially like, like right away. And so that was done on March 10th. I did go in that morning um, earlier than scheduled time to have the mammogram done first. And so um, I'll share a little bit about having a mammogram done um, and then having the biopsy done. And so again, to kind of pick back where we left off, you know, the ultrasound essentially showed that the mass that I felt um, basically was suspicious for malignancy. Um, how the radiologist looks at it is basically it was a solid mass, um, had angular borders according to the report, um, or basically irregular borders. Um, and so those things led them to believe that it was suspicious. And so anytime a mass is suspicious for malignancy, the recommendation is to have a biopsy. And so um, having a mammogram done is not as bad as some people make it seem. I've heard women just kind of say like, oh, it was extremely uncomfortable. Um, it squeezed too tight. I don't know. I mean, maybe it could be different for like the size of your breasts, but I mean, I'm pretty full. So my breasts are, well, even during that, that at that time, they were probably considered like 34 Ds, double Ds, because again, I was lactating. And so they're, you know, full a lot and heavier. Um, and then my normal size, my, my normal size is 34 C. And so, um, yeah, mammogram, the mammogram wasn't, that was easy um, for me, um, especially the mammogram that was done before the biopsy because I had to go back in after the biopsy was done to do another mammogram to mark, basically see the markers that were put in from the biopsy. Um, but the, like that one was uncomfortable because at that point, I was cut, you know, there were incisions and needle, you know, places where the needle had been. And so I was uncomfortable for that part of it, but just like a normal everyday, um, you know, no pain or cuts or anything abnormal going on with your body, that type of mammogram, it wasn't bad. Um, at the check-in, so I checked in at the breast center. Let's start there. I checked, we got checked in at the breast center. Um, they, like, it, none of this is really relevant to, you know, everyone that watches this because it's going to be different depending on where you go. But in, in terms of where I went for my mammogram, they, you know, have like a two-step check-in process. So you check in with the facility, like kind of in the front first. And then from there, they send you back to another area, which is like the area where mainly just women go that are going for a um for a mammogram so um so once I got checked in um both areas that's when they called me back and they called me back and they put me back in a little room gave me a gown to change into and you know told me that the tech would get me from there and so I hung out in that room, not long at all. And sure enough, you know, someone knocked on the door and said they were ready. And so we went in the room where they have the machine. Um, any woman that has had a mammogram is familiar with how the machine looks. I actually had a 3D mammogram done. The 3D mammogram was recommended by my radiologist, Dr. Shaw. 
Um, she, she recommends the 3D mammogram for any woman who has what they consider dense breast. Um, it just, she says that it just, it creates, you know, the image and the layers of the image where they can really, really, um, I guess, kind of separate those images um, and, and really see areas of the breast that they wouldn't typically see on a 2D mammogram. And so with me having, with me being lactating, a lactating mom, um, my breast, it had a, you know, a lot going on with it with, you know, milk ducts and they're trying to see through all that extraness to make sure that they get this right. And so, yeah, I had a 3D mammogram done. And so that machine, um, I don't know how it compares to the 2D, 2D mammogram machine, but, you know, I just kind of stood in there and, you know, they kind of tell you how you have to place your your arm and your breast and how you stand and how you lean um, so that they can get all the different angles and shots that they need it. Um, and so, like I said, the, the process of it, it wasn't painful um, at all. It's, it can, I can definitely, I can see how it can be painful to some people, but just overall, what I'm basically trying to say is just don't, don't let people scare you out of getting a mammogram because they're like, oh, it's, it's painful. It's, it may be uncomfortable. It may be um, that you have to stand in, you know, uncomfortable positions for a significant amount of time. Um, but just the overall process of it, it's get your mammogram done. Get a mammogram done, get a 3D mammogram, especially if you have dense breasts. Um, so yeah, so the mammogram was done first and then from there, and they did a bilateral. We had a bilateral mammogram done. Um, Cause at this point we know what we see in the, in the left breast, but we, you know, the radiologist also wanted to see if it was anything going on with the other breast as well, because while she's in there, getting those samples from the left the left breast then if we need to get samples from the other breast as well let's do all that at one time and not have to you know just assume that it's okay and it's not and so yeah i had a bilateral mammogram done um and so that process didn't take long um they sent the you know the images over to dr shaw i was then placed in another another waiting area until it was time for me to go back for the biopsy. I hung out in the waiting area for a little while and I did, I was able to have a support person um, with me for that appointment as well. And so my husband and baby Matea, um, they were both there for that appointment and, you know, hung out, were able to hang out with me in the waiting area until it was time. And once it was time for me to go back for the, uh, biopsy um you know we parted our ways and i went back into another room um where they had everything set up and ready to go the uh the the ultrasound tech from the you know when i went in for the ultrasound tech she was in there for that for the biopsy as well because it is an ultrasound guided biopsy core needle biopsy and so she was there um dr shaw came in the room we talked about what we were doing again that day. And so there was an update. After looking at the mammogram, she decided that we needed to get another sample in addition to the two samples that we had discussed um, previously. So I originally came in there knowing that I was gonna have a biopsy of what I felt and the lymph node that she saw during the ultrasound that was suspicious. Um, however, after having the mammogram done, the mammogram showed an additional area that they felt like um, needed. Again, I'm at track practice, so I see the kids in the, in the background. Um, but the mammogram showed an additional area that um, she felt needed to be sampled as well um, in the left breast. She was able to confirm that the right breast looked completely normal um, and there were no calcification um, or no areas you know, of concern with the right breast um, during that time. So that was good news. Um, but you know, the left breast unfortunately had other areas that I couldn't feel that had 
suspicion, you know, gave her suspicious um, feelings that it was malignancy as well. And so, you know, she came in and explained that we would be getting three samples instead of two samples. Um, the other area, so the area where I felt, um, again, that was, you know, kind of a, a, above where my nipple is, um, the area that the mammogram also picked up is a little bit above that where I felt the mass at. So it was a little above that area, um, both in the same region, um, just kind of going up the breast. And so um, she, you know, again, explained that we would be getting three samples and I agreed that that was what I would have wanted to do. So we, we got started with the process. Now, the biopsy, the biopsy part of it, um, it wasn't painful. Um, so uh, that's another thing, um, women. I've heard people say, you know, that they, they decided to wait um, because they were afraid to have a biopsy done because they were, you know, afraid that it was going to be painful or whatever the case may be. It's, they're going to make sure that you're comfortable during that procedure. And if it's done right, you're not going to feel anything. Okay. So don't wait to get yourself checked out because you were afraid of what the next steps may be because somebody scared you into believing that it was going to be painful and, 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 uh, you know, extremely uncomfortable and you can't, you couldn't tolerate it. I can guarantee you that part of any type of breast cancer, um, that part of any type of breast cancer, um, survivor's story is the easy part. Like I look like I wasn't afraid of it, but you know, just knowing what I know now in terms of where I am on this side of it, that is the easy part. The biopsy, the ultrasound, the mammogram, all of that is easy. There is no discomfort in this world that outweighs um, the, the things that you go through on the other side once you get the diagnosis. Pre-diagnosis, get mammograms, ladies. It's not that uncomfortable. It's a short amount of time of, of inconvenience. Get it done and it could save your life. Biopsies, get them done. Don't hold off, don't wait. Um, again, short amount of time. Um, but that can ulti ultimately save your life because you can find out where you are at a, and hopefully be at an earlier stage to get yourself treated. And so get those things done. Um, so now going back, um, the biopsy, they give you, um, I felt the needle. So where she got her samples from, she injected some numbing medication to make it comfortable to stick a big needle in there and you know, get tissue sample. And so she made small incisions. Well, after she injected the area with the numbing medicine, she made small incisions and I didn't feel them at all. I didn't feel anything um, on that side. I felt the needle with the numbing medicine. That was a little, little sting. Um, but outside of that, I didn't feel anything else. It was completely pain-free. And so you know, anyone that's going through that process, um, and if that's what you're afraid of, the pain, and you do feel something, speak up, say something, um, so that they can give you the medicine that you need to not feel pain, because um, you shouldn't feel any pain with it. Dr. Shaw, she got the um, the samples that she needed. Um, it took, so the, the device that they use for the cord needle biopsy, it can be a little int intimidating. Um, the clicking sound that it makes as it like retracts to pull the tissue is what makes it sound, you know, kind of scary. Um, but you do not feel it. I did not feel any of that. And so, you know, she was able to show me what that looked like and what it would sound like before she even inserted it. And so when it got to the part of her getting the samples and I'm hearing that sound, I know what it is. Um, and so I'm not freaking out about it. The, it took for each for all three samples, it took, you know, a few times for her to get enough tissue um, to feel comfortable enough to send it off to pathology. Um, they would get the tissue and then they would put it in a sample um, container that had a solution in it. And, you know, based off of whether it floated or, or whether it sank to the bottom, 
um, she knew whether or not she needed to get more tissue from that area. And so getting tissue from the mass that I felt, um, that didn't seem um, difficult for her at all, actually. And so that was the easy one. When she got to the area that the mammogram picked up that I don't actually feel, that one she was concerned about because of kind of where it was, um, kind of deeper, um, not as, um, not as like surface level as the mass that I feel is a little deeper. And so she was concerned that she was going to have a hard time getting that one. And I prayed, prayed, prayed while she was in there that she could get that sample without any difficulty because, you know, of course, with me lactating, um, being afraid of a milk fistula, things like that, I'm just like, please be able to get it because I want to know too, if that's something we need to worry about. And so, um, thankfully, she was able to get, uh, you know, a sample of that area as well without any difficulty. Um, and so last, the last area um, was the lymph node. And so she, um, that was a little bit deeper. Um, that took a few clicks, um, a few, a few tissue areas for her um, to get to where she felt comfortable that she had enough of that as well. And um, after that, it, it, that was it she um cleaned the area there was there is some bleeding involved because there's a, a huge needle and like i said there was an incision made and so um there was some bleeding involved and so she cleaned the area um put just some gauze right there for right then and then i was kind of sent where i would be with a nurse who would help me dress that area um, more appropriately and receive the aftercare instructions that I needed to receive. Now, while she was in the room, Dr. Shaw was still in the room, after everything was done, we got the samples. I'm like, oh, yay, great. Um, she, you know, kind of, you know, explained like, you know, the nurse would help me with, like I said, the aftercare instructions. And then she asked if I had any questions for her and so me, I tried so hard. I tried very, very hard not to, not to ask and to just let it go and just wait until the pathology report comes back to find out um, what this is that I was dealing with. But the more, like as she was doing the biopsies, the more I kept saying, don't ask, don't ask, don't ask, don't ask, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait on the, pi the pathology. And I, I had my mind made up that I wasn't going to ask and I was going to wait. But as soon as she asked me if I had any questions, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. I had to go in there. And so I went in with my question. And so me being me, I said, okay, so I know you do this every day. You do this every day. You see this every day. And so based off of what you see here now, what you see on the mammogram, what we've seen on the ultrasound, and what you see every day. How do you feel about what this is? What do you think it is? I said, I know, I know you're gonna wait on the pathology report, and I get that. You don't wanna you don't wanna diagnose anything without having the pathology report. However, I know you do this every day and you see this every day. So what what do you feel like? And she asked me, she put her hands on me and she got closer to me and she, she's such a sweet person. She said, do you want me to be real? And I said, yeah. And so she said, Dr. Shah said, she said, I'd be, I'd be surprised if it's not. And I said, okay, you know, okay. And so she said, if it's not, we're going to, you know, follow you closely. We're going to, um, you know, want to monitor those areas and, and, and the, the markers are there now. So we'll know exactly what we're looking for. And so, and I don't know if I mentioned that, but when they do a biopsy, after they get the tissue samples, they also put in a little piece of metal as a marker in that area so that they know, you know, where it was that that helps for that helps for um surgery purposes it helps for um 
you know, future mammograms or imaging that's done. Um, so in the event that it wasn't cancer, they would have known that those areas were areas that were suspicious in the past. And so it allows them to, you know, see and mark what changes have occurred. And so um, those are placed after they get the samples, okay? And so going back to what Dr. Shaw said, she said, if it's not, we're gonna follow. We have those markers in place. Oh, baby Matea's waking up. We have those markers in place. And so we'll know, you know, what we're looking at and be able to compare and keep up with it. So yeah, um, Dr. Shaw, she just kept saying like, if it's not, if it's not, if it's not. And I, I know that by the time she got to the third, if it's not and what we were going to do, in my mind, I knew that it was. Um, I didn't want it to be. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't convinced that it was um, completely 100%, but I, f I was feeling it. I was feeling that it, it, it was definitely a possibility that it could be. And I remember listening to gospel music because when I first got in the room, the tech asked what kind of music I like to listen to. And I told her to play uh, Tasha Cobb's Leonard music. And, and so I was listening to Tasha's music and I remember just having like tears well up in my eyes and I was fighting them back like, no, 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 don't you cry, you be strong because regardless of what those results come back as, you got this and you can do this. And so, um, yeah, yeah, it, it, I shouldn't have asked, but I did. And so I left out of there. I didn't say anything to my husband he, at that time. He knows about this now, but I didn't tell him at that time that I had asked that question and what she said because I didn't even want to steal, you know, any hope um, that he had or anything that he was holding on to to keep him strong during that time. And so I didn't tell anybody what was said between Dr. Shaw and I. I just went home and you know continued to pray and people continued to pray over me and I continued to just try to believe that it it could be something else it doesn't have to be cancer it could be something else and regardless if it is it's going to be okay it's going to be okay after after the biopsy but before i was sent to the nurse for like to dress the wound and wrap me and all that i did have to go back to get another mammogram done and that was essentially for placement of the markers because like i said after they get the sample, they put these markers in the areas where they took the samples from. Um, and so I had to go back for them to get, you know, like their baseline, um, their baseline images for where those markers were placed. Um, and so that, that part, like I was saying earlier, that part of a mammogram is uncomfortable. Um, but that's not your regular mammogram. That's imaging after a procedure. And so that was uncomfortable because it was sore from, you know, being poked and cut and stuck and all that. And I remember specifically, like, just getting the breast images wasn't that bad. Um, but when they had to do, like, the axillary, so the lymph node, um, where she put that marker was very, very hard for them to get an image. And so, you know, with me leaning and they pushing me further into the, like the machine area, um, that part, it was like, good God, this is, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable. Was it excruciating pain? No, um, but that was the only part of that imaging process that I felt truly uncomfortable. Um, but again, it's because I had incisions and, you know, other things that were going on that would make that uncomfortable. You know, after everything was said and done, I did go back into another like waiting area where I um, was able to go ahead and get dressed. 
they did tell me, I didn't say this already, they told me to bring like a tight supportive bra to wear that day. And so I was able to go ahead and get dressed and um, basically put that uh, bra on in the area, you know, and the nurse was there to help redress the area and she got a good dressing in place and did my teaching with me. And so after I got the area clean, redressed, uh, tight sports bra on, they also wrapped me with an ACE bandage and told me to essentially like, you know, try to keep that in place um, for at least, it was like up to 48 hours um, or more. And so um, I asked her, I said, well, what am I supposed to do? Cause I'm breastfeeding. And so she said, oh, you know, well you can, you know, take it off or you can move that up to breastfeed um, whenever you need to, but just make sure you put it back on. And so, you know, that was pretty much it. Keep the area clean, dry, um, watch out for that possibility of, you know, the fistula. Um, she and Dr. Shaw also mentioned that I may want to pump and dump for the first couple of feedings because it will, um, the milk will have blood in it. Um, I didn't have any, like, they weren't concerned about, like, the, the numbing medicine or anything like that. That should have already been absorbed in my body and shouldn't have crossed the milk. Um, but more importantly, um, the, the blood would have been in the milk. And so she was like, you know, you may want to pump and dump um, for a few feeds or, you know, you can give it to the baby. It's not, you know, not going to hurt the baby to drink the milk um, that has blood in it, but it's up to you. And so... Um, just kind of you know left out of there um you know like that i also um was told to limit like activity on that side for a little while so try not to lift um matea on that side uh for a couple days um so between not being able to lift wearing the um restrictive tight you know sports bra, ace bandage for a couple days. Like, you know, that was a little, that was a little challenging to deal with, um, but we made it work. Um, someone would just hand me the baby because I remember asking like, was it even wise to even like breastfeed on that side? Cause I'm like, I can just feed her on the other side and not even have to worry about, you know, the the the, the biopsy side and the, and the milk fistula and all that because I don't want them problems and they were like no because you you do still want to feed because you don't want to get engorged because then that's a whole nother problem I'm like oh yeah that's right so I just remember like at one point like well we don't have to use that side I got two boobs we can feed on the other side um but it wasn't it wasn't challenging to feed her on that side it did burn a little bit um when she would nurse on that side um, after I had pumped, because I did decide once I got home that I was going to pump and dump um, some of the milk. And I did see the blood in the milk and it was too much blood for me to want to give it, give it to her um, like that. And so, yeah, I did pump and dump for a couple feedings um, for that side. Now, again, we had a whole nother boob that she could nurse on. So I wasn't concerned about her not getting anything to eat. And so I did pump and dump for a few feeds. Um, but then after that, you know, she nursed fine on that side. And thankfully we didn't get any milk, no uh, milk fistula on that side. After a couple of days, um, the soreness went away um, and everything was back to normal for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. And so um, we continued on, my baby and I continued on our breastfeeding journey and um, everything was pretty much, you know, kind of up in the air until whatever was happening next. Um, I did leave out of there also knowing that I would get a call the next day uh, with some of the results. Um, they told me that I should have had the results in terms of, you know, if, if this was, you know, anything that was malignant by that Friday, which was March 11th, um, but that the actual testing that tells what the receptors are and all that stuff would take um several you know several days to come but someone would call me on friday to let me know 
you know, the, the main result of the biopsy and what we were dealing with. Um, and so, you know, thanked everyone for all their help and left out of there and, you know, tried to go on with life as much as possible. And that's what we did. Um, my kids were huge helpers and me, you know, not being able to lift Mateo on the left side and being able to, you know, alternate and move around and get in positions that allow me to be able to feed her without lifting on that side. Um, Cause of course you want to, you want that area to be able to clot off to heal as fast as possible. And it was able to do that. And so I was definitely thankful for that. Um, so guys, yeah, so that's, that's the, that's the biopsy. I know this video is super long. There's a lot that I talked about in this video. Um, but that's, that was my experience. That was my experience. I went home with, you know, a, a little sheet to kind of refer back to and went home knowing that, you know, within about 24 hours, somebody would be calling me to either tell me that, you know, it's a miracle and this is not cancer or that this is cancer and our faith is going to be tested and we're going to have to we're going to have to stand firm in what we believe and know that everything's going to be okay. And so we left out of there like, all right, let's, let's go. And so thank you guys. Um, thank you for listening. Um, I will share the next video I share will be about like the pathology report, those results, um, and go from there. And so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, you guys, um, you know, I'm not no YouTube, uh, professional, but you know, I, I'm supposed to say like, comment, share, um, and hit the subscription button. If you want to continue to, uh, follow this journey and know about what I went through and how it affected me and what happened next. So again, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I will see chat with you guys later. All right.